from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Mr. Dollar, this is Henry Parker with Continental Assurance out in Reno. Well, how are things in Nevada, Mr. Parker? Terrible, sir, just terrible. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. What seems uh, to be... Excuse me, Mr. Dollar. Yeah? Uh, there's someone here who would like to speak with you. Oh, who? Give me that who do you suppose it is, you sloth-eyed Pinkerton? Sounds to me like a cantankerous old character named Jodiah Gillis. Cantankerous? Why, you miserable... What are you doing in Reno, Mr. Gillis? I'll tell you when you get here. When I get... Oh, no, now, wait a minute. I can't wait. If I do, he'll be dead and it'll be your fault. Who? A feline friend of mine. A what? Oh, being uncouth like you, you'd probably call him a cat. Oh, no. Look, Jodiah. Also, he's rich. He's what? Rich, yes, sir. Last week, he inherited $60,000. This week, somebody's making sure he won't live long enough to spend it. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Assurance Company, Reno, Nevada. The following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Felicity Feline matter. Expense account item one, $164, air transportation, Hartford to Reno. En route, I wondered again what Jodiah Gillis was doing in Nevada. At Reno, he was on the flight deck waiting for my plane, and standing beside him wearing a dark suit and expression to match was a tall, cadaverous-looking gentleman. As I started down the ramp, Jodiah began calling me. Yeah, there he is. Oh, oh, dollar. You who? Hey, John. Oh, hi. Afternoon, Jodiah. Well, you are a sight for sore eyes, boy. Yes, indeed, you are. Johnny, this is my friend and business associate, Henry Parker. Mr. Parker? <laughs> oh, I'm certainly glad you've arrived, sir. That's all? Yes, my, yes. Mr. Gillis has been quite concerned over Felicity. The Felicity? The feline. What do you think you came out here for? Your health? Well, no. Yeah, and give Parker your checks. My checks? So what's the matter with you? The altitude affects your mind? Hand over your claim checks so Parker can fetch your luggage. Oh, uh, uh, sure. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, Parker. Go on. We haven't got all day. Whatever you say, Mr. Gillis. Yeah. We'll be in the waiting room. You hurry up. Yes, sir. Now, come on, Dollar. Come on, come on. Jodiah, before I left Hartford, I tried to check up on this Continental Assurance Company. Nobody ever heard of it. A lot of things those white-bellied clerks in Hartford haven't heard of. But the fact is, Continental ain't exactly worldwide. Oh. Uh-huh. In here, in here. No, sir. It ain't nationwide either. Well, uh, just how wide is it? Well, you know how far it is from Winnemucca to Black Butte? Uh, no. Good. It's just about that wide. Oh. And Parker is one of their agents, huh? Agents? Parker is the president of the Continental. The president? But you just... I mean... Well, you look peaked, boy. You better sit down. Phew. <laughs> Jodiah, I shouldn't let the man that's paying my salary run after my bag. Peace, Tash. Here. Take a look at this. It's my new business card. <laughs> yeah, go on, read it. Uh, Jodiah Gillis, chairman of the board, Continental. What? Yes, sir. But Floyd's of England has always carried your policy. Carried, yes, past tense. I don't take guff from anybody, especially a ninny of an insurance agent telling me what I can insure and what I can't. You had a fight with him? Yep. My cousin Rachel, oh, she's a sweet girl. She lives in the Belgian Congo. She sent me an African anteater. Now, all I wanted Floyd's to do was insure it for $15,000. And of course they wouldn't. Nope. So you canceled all your policies and bought the controlling interest in Continental. Same as anybody else would have done. Oh, sure, sure. And uh, naturally, you insured this anteater. Yeah, Archie. That was his name. Who was his name? What happened to him? Well, it was a terrible thing, Johnny. Oh, it was just poor old Archie. He overindulged. Over? He did what? Yeah, he overindulged. He found a house full of termites. Oh. Yes, finally died. Acute indigestion. Too bad. But of course, Continental Assurance paid off. And of course they paid off, and with a smile. Same as they paid off the $60,000 to my feline friend, Felicity. 
What 60,000 to Felicity? What do you think? The 60,000 Felicity inherited from Mrs. Hammermeyer. And who is Mrs... Was, was, was. All right, was Mrs. Hammermeyer. A client of Henry Parker's had a life policy for 60,000. Felicity was the beneficiary. But didn't she have any children or relatives? She had one brother, a nephew, and a niece. Oh, of course, not counting Mrs. Hawkins, who was Mrs. Hammermeyer's best friend. <clears throat> you see, the two ladies lived together 15 years. Now, right now, Mrs. Hawkins has been appointed trustee to administer the 60 grand as Felicity needs. Oh, I see. Yes, you'll meet her as soon as we get settled. Jodiah, what makes you think someone's trying to kill that cat? I don't think so. I know it. There have been two attempts in two weeks. You ask Mrs. Hawkins. She'll tell you. Mr. Gillis, Mr. Dollar. Ah, yeah. yeah it's about time, Parker. Well, come on, Johnny, come on. We'll take you down to the Mapes. The Mapes? The Mapes Hotel. I'm staying there. And if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for you. The Mapes Hotel stands high above Virginia Street, overlooking the Truckee River. After Gillis checked me in and introduced me to the owner, Mr. Charles Mapes, I unpacked and went with Judiah out to the old Hamelmeyer place where Felicity the Cat, Mrs. Hawkins, and the relatives still live. We rang the old-fashioned doorbell and waited. In a moment, the door was opened by a pasty-faced man of about 28. Yeah? Oh, Mr. Gillis. Yes, afternoon, Oscar. Mrs. Hawkins in? Ain't she always? Who's he? He's a friend of mine who's also an insurance investigator. An insurance? Name's Johnny Dollar. Johnny, this is Oscar Emmett, the late Mrs. Hammermeyer's nephew. I am. I suppose you're here about that lousy cat. Uh, that's right. Well, uh, come on in. I'll tell the old lady you're here. You know where the living room is at, don't you, Mr. Oh, indeed I do. Oh, friendly sort of character. Uh, Oscar's like the rest of the Emmetts. They just can't stand seeing Felicity eat steak when they got to have tuna casserole uh -huh. in here, darling. All right. Well, what kind of work does he do? Work? Oh, Oscar, none of the Emmett's work. No, sir. Not even Mrs. Hamelmeyer's brother? Emmett. Emmett spends all his time in the gambling halls. You know, gambling's legal here. He a professional? Oh, no, no. He's got a slot machine route. He huh? goes around poking his finger in the payoff trays, picking up the nickels and dimes that people overlook. <laughs> Yeah, let's sit down here. Let's sit down. Oh, uh, uh, what the hell is Felicity? That cat has claws. Oh, you stepped on his tail, you stupid. Oh, oh. Tell him you're sorry, Dollar. Well, I didn't know he was there. Sorry, Felicity. Oh, the bad man didn't see you. Oh, what's going on? Oh, yeah. Felicity, oh. you get right down off that table. You hear me. Oh, oh, oh you. Uh, oh. Uh, Mr. Gillis. Would you use your influence, please? Well, I'll certainly try, Mrs. Hawkins. <laughs> Felicity. Come on now, honey. That's a good kitty. There. there. Now. I just put out a nice dish of scallops for him. Oh, you hear that, Felicity? Scallops? Oh, yum, yum. Sure. So you run along now. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, I, I do declare I've never seen a man who has such a way with animals. Well, I... I and that yes. goes for lonely widows, too, Mr. Gillis. <laughs> oh, oh, now, Leona, stop. <clears throat> Jodiah. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Hawkins. Leona is just fine. Yeah, well, well, this is the young fellow I was telling you about, Johnny Dollar. Oh, oh, well... This is indeed a pleasure, Mr. Dollar. Jodiah told me so much about you. Oh, is that so? You're much more handsome than I imagined, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, now, good gravy, Leona. Now, you just tell him what's been going on around here. You mean about Felicity? Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, somebody's after him. Trying to kill him. Tell me, has an actual attempt been made on his life? Wednesday night, a week ago. I let him out just before I went to bed, like always. Uh-huh. He'd been out about an hour when it started to pour... And knowing Felicity hates to get wet, I opened the front door to call him. Well, just as he was crossing the street, I heard this big car start up, yeah. and it zoomed straight for Felicity. Whoever was driving it almost turned over trying to hit him. You didn't get a good look at the driver, huh? I didn't get any kind of a look. It was too dark. Well, what about the car? What make was it? If I knew that, I'd have already told you that. I haven't any secrets from him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, tell him about last Thursday, Leona. Felicity was poisoned. That's what the vet said. Somebody put arsenic in his lobster. 
Lobster? Oh, yes, he just loves it. According to the instructions Mrs. Hamelmeyer left, he's to have lobster once a week, steak three times, and boiled chicken every Sunday. I see. Yes. And as long as I take care of him and obey her instructions, I can live here rent free, same as her kin, the Emmets. Uh huh. Same as them. Mr. Gillis, just who gets Felicity's money in case he dies? The Emmett family? We aren't sure. Oh, why is that? Because Mrs. Hammermeyer left a sealed envelope to be opened only in the event of Felicity's death. Oh, the Emmets will get all that's left, Mr. Dollar, I'm sure of it. Oh, no, 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 Leon. You mustn't look on the dark side. Well, I did rub Mildred, uh, Mrs. Hammermeyer's back and bunions for a good many years. Did her marketing. Saw she got her medicine on time. I do hope she appreciated it. Oh, she it. did. She did, Leona. You see. You dear, sweet man. Hello? Anybody home? Where is everybody? We're in the living room. If I figure they start flocking in, now it's dinner time. Uh, Dollar. Yeah? It's Joyce Emmett, the niece. She hates cats. Told me so herself. Oh. Well, evening, Mrs. Hawkins. Do I have time to take a shower before dinner? Oh. I didn't know he had company. Mr. Emmett, Joyce, you both know Mr. Gillis. Yes. Hi, Mr. Gillis. Terrible. And this is Mr. Johnny Dollar. He's investigating the trouble we've had about Felicity. After the would-be cat killer, huh, Johnny? Yeah, that's right. I'll lay eight to five, you never catch him. Or her. Could be a woman, you know. Oh, yes, yes. It most certainly could. Why, Joyce, the way you say that, you act as if you want Mr. Dollar to start investigating you. Maybe I do. How about it, Johnny? Well, uh, how do you feel about Felicity, Miss Hammond? The Hammond? same as everyone else in this house. Aunt Mildred had no business leaving all her money to that... that creeping night crawler. Joyce. Well, he is. Mr. Dollar, just what interest do you have in Felicity? He isn't insured. Mr. Gillis sent for me, Mr. Emmett. He did? Yes, I did. Continental has a moral responsibility to see that the funds handed over to widows, children, and dumb animals are protected from swindlers, connivers, and blackguards. Of which I'm sure this house has many. Why, you uh, pompous, me. wrinkled old Romeo. Joyce, please, if you can't hold your tongue, leave the room. Well, what I said is the truth. Man his age getting romantic. You wait, girl. Thirty years from now, you'll be mighty glad men my age can get romantic. <laughs> oh, that's telling Mr. Emmett. <laughs> Mr. Emmett, do you yeah. share your daughter's opinion of Felicity? Why, of course I do. I'm a dog man. Besides, I can't see why she left all that money to the critter. Mrs. Hawkins has figured up what it costs to keep him like a king every week. Yes, yes, $23. Uh, maybe a trifle more by the time I get him out of the pretty kitty. The pretty kitty? Well, it's a beauty parlor for cats. Felicity has a standing appointment there every Friday at 1. Oh, no. $23 a week. You know how many weeks it'll take him to spend that 60000 not counting the interest that'll add up while he's doing it? No, not exactly. No, 2,600 no. weeks. 50 years. And believe me, the odds in any cat living to be 50 years old, well... I'll lay you ten to one. He doesn't live another six months. Joy. Oh, speak of the devil. Well, hello there, Felicity. Oh, did you know we were talking about you? Did you finish up all your dinner, Felicity? He sometimes doesn't eat all his scallops. Last week I gave them to Oscar. Oh, it's disgusting. Hmm? Well, look at him. He thinks he owns us. What do you mean, thinks? <laughs> A few minutes later, Jodiah drove me back to the Mapes. Whether it was the Emmets or Mrs. Hawkins who wanted Felicity out of the way, I didn't know. But I did know we should get him out of that house as soon as possible. I changed my clothes, met Jodiah and his friend Charlie Mapes in the Skyrim for dinner, did a bit of gambling, then went to bed. Must have been about 3.30 when the phone rang. Hello. Hello. Oh, mm. Dollar, please answer me. Hmm? Huh? Who is it? Oh, well, what is it, Mrs. Hawkins? What's wrong? Oh, it's terrible. Oh, it's just terrible. Well, what's, what is it? What's happened? Felicity, he, oh, he. Felicity what? I let him out about ten, but he, he has disappeared. Mr. Dollar, I know he's been killed. <laughs> Two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. 
Anyone who has survived the rigors of basic training is familiar with a great variety of milk that is dished out periodically in the armed forces. Now, there's frozen milk, concentrated milk, frozen concentrate, and good old powdered milk. But sometimes, supplying wholesome, fresh, real milk has been a problem when servicemen have been stationed in out-of-the-way places. The United States Air Force came across that problem some time ago in the island of Teixeira, in the Azores, those Portuguese islands that dot an eastern portion of the Atlantic Ocean. The air base there was considered powdered milk country for a long time. Although cattle have played an important role in the economy of the island of Teixeira, the herd was badly inbred and milk production was very low. Modern milk processing was not a part of the picture. And with the help of Portuguese veterinarians, the men in the United States Air Force unit worked out a free breeding service by using a small herd of milk cows acquired in England and the cattle there at Teixeira improved. Then, a complete pasteurizing, homogenizing, sterilizing, bottling refrigeration plant was flown in from the United States. As soon as this activity got underway, milk production began to climb steadily, and thirsty Air Force men and civilians were soon buying and drinking the new fresh milk. When economy of the island began to rise rapidly, the people were happy and grateful. You might say that a little milk of human kindness increased understanding on an island of freedom, the right of all men everywhere. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Felicity Feline Matter. A few minutes later, Jediah Gillis and I were at the old Hamelmeyer home. Joyce and her father, along with Mrs. Hawkins, were waiting for us. Oscar Emmett was nowhere to be found. He's the one, Johnny. Yes, sir, that shifty critter, that Oscar... He stole Felicity, and is going to do him in. Ah, that poor Felicity. Oh, for heaven's sake, Mr. Gillis, pull yourself together. Oscar could be downtown having a run of luck, Mr. Dollar. Well, if he's gambling this time of night, he shouldn't be too hard to find. Mrs. Hawkins. Yes? When did you first realize Felicity was missing? Why, about an hour ago, I guess it was. I woke up and remembered he was still outside, so I came down and called him. Yeah? Always before, ever since he was a little kitten, he's come back home for me. But tonight... Well, he's just nowhere to be found. What time did you let him out? About uh, 10.30, same time as I always do. Were you at home then, Joyce? No, she wasn't. I had a real good day yesterday, collected almost $4, so I took her to a movie. A movie? <laughs> That's a likely story I've ever heard. It <laughs> happens to be the truth, Mr. Gillis. What'd you see? Come on, tell me. It was an old one about a giant gorilla. That's right. Oh, I'll bet, I'll bet. Well, you die. You die, huh? If anything has happened to poor Felicity, will we? Well, how much time will we be given before we have to move out of this house? Well, that's up to the court, but I'd say a couple of weeks. That's all? Oh, my. Well, it's all they deserve. My. All except you, my dear. Well, Johnny, you've been unusually quiet. What do you think? I think we'll take in the late spots, Judiah. See how our luck's running. Started at the Mapes and went down Virginia Street, stopping in at every gambling casino, hoping we'd find Oscar Emmett. Finally, we found him at one of the roulette wheels in Harold's Club. And in front of him was a large stack of chips. Make your bets, ladies and gentlemen. There's a couple of seats around here, gents. No, thanks. We'll just watch our friend. And a very lucky friend he is, too. Put these on 32 and these on... Uh... Good morning, Oscar. What? <laughs> well, what are you two doing here? We've been looking for you. That's so? What for? You know what for, you cat napper. What'd you do with Felicity? That cat? You know any other Felicity? You know good loafer? All bets are down. No, 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 wait a minute. I wanted these chips on 13 black. Sorry, all bets are down. What? Now see what you two made me do. If that 13 hits, I... Well, what do you want to see me about? We told you. Felicity. You know where he is? Now, how would I know? Where have you been since 10.30 this evening? All around town. How long have you been here? Long enough. Look out now. 
15, hard and black. Oh, why, do you, do you see what you two clowns cost me? Take my mind off what I'm doing. Now get out of my way. I'm cashing in. You're not doing nothing to the answer our questions, Mr. Oscar Emmett. You hear me? Oh, yeah. Oh. Hey. Just a minute, Oscar. Hold back. Shania, are you all right? Uh, yes, I guess a fine bodyguard you'd make. Oh, uh, Mr. Gillis, I'm... I'm sorry, I, I didn't really mean to hit you. Well, you sure it, did. Yes, sir. <laughs> but here, let me help you up. Are you sure you're all right, should I? Yes, if I could just sit here a minute, I'll be fine. Okay, okay, folks, it's all over. Let's get back to our business. Oh, uh, uh want to come over here a second, Dollar? If you say so. That crazy old fool. I, I didn't really mean to hit him so hard, but he... Well, you know how it is sometimes. That was the best run of luck I had this year. Well, don't worry about your dyer. He sometimes forgets he's not as young as he used to be. Huh. You can say that again. Boy, the way he's been letting that Mrs. Hawkins make a fool of him. How do you mean? Oh, you know. Telling him how much she's in love with him, how nice it'll be after they're married, you know. You heard her say this? Sure. You see, my room's on the first floor just off the parlor. And I can't help but hear what's going on. Uh-huh. Well, what makes you think Mrs. Hawkins isn't sincere? Because she's been given the same line to Mr. Remmett. Oh. No, only she's, she really loves him. Oh, yes, sir. Sometimes he argues with her and she breaks out crying. Now, that's something no woman like her could fake. Yeah. Maybe you're right. I didn't tell Jodiah what I'd learned from Oscar. At least not then. The wind had already been taken out of his sails. So I took him back to the Mapes. I made sure he was going to be all right. Then I returned to the old Hamelmeyer house. Joyce, Mr. Emmett, and Mrs. Hawkins were out in the yard hunting for Felicity. Hi, Johnny. Well, hi is so. We've got some coffee inside if you're interested. Coffee? Sure. But have you found any sign of Felicity? Not yet. Poor Miss Hawkins, she's about to go out of her mind. Uh-huh. Did you find Oscar last night? Yeah, yeah. He's been having a session downtown at a roulette table. That's what I thought. Johnny? Mm hmm What will happen if we don't find Felicity? I, I mean, if he's just run away, we won't be able to prove he's dead. And the money... Well, what will happen? Do you know? Well, I imagine there'll be a waiting period, and then the court will declare Felicity dead, and the money will go wherever Mrs. Hamelmeyer has willed it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I sure wish I knew what's in the envelope Mr. Gillis has locked in his office. Mrs. Hawkins! What? Joyce! Mr. Dollar! Now, what is it, Dad? In here, quick! Johnny, he found something in the garage. Come on, come on! The garage was about 25 yards from where we'd been standing. We made it nothing flat. Inside, toward the back and on the ground, was a small hatchet. And near the hatchet was some blood. And cat fur. Oh, oh Johnny. Oh, no. Poor Felicity. Oh, the poor, poor thing. Well, oh. it, it looks like he met his end here, oh, and then whoever did goodness. it carted him away, oh, huh, Dollar? That looks that way. Oh. Johnny, I... Oh, take me out of here. Yeah, sure, oh. Joyce. My goodness. So ashamed. And you know I hated that cat. I really wanted him dead, but not like this. Not... Oh, hey, 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 come on now. I know it's silly, I'm mean, using it. No, no, I don't think it is. Oh, Mr. Dollar. Yes, ma'am. Will you be kind enough to notify Mr. Gillis? I... Oh, I'm afraid I just couldn't speak about it over the telephone. Of course. I'll be glad to. I drove Judea's car back to the hotel. I made sure he was feeling better than told him what we'd found in the garage. Naturally, he wanted to call out the police reserves, but I managed to talk him out of it. At 10 o'clock, I made some telephone calls to the local banks. When I got the information I'd been after... Jodiah and I again drove out to the Hamelmeyer house. Well, I expected you two gentlemen a couple of hours ago. Sorry, Mrs. Hawkins. I had some things to take care of. Oh, well, come in. Uh, what's the matter with... Why, Jodiah Gillis, you've been fighting. So I have, woman. So I have. Sweet darling, and at your age... Seems like I've been doing a lot of crazy fool things at my age. Now, just what do you mean by that? You know very well what. Pulling the wool over my eyes. Let me think that I'd found a true sweetheart at last. Oh, you... You miserable Jezebel. 
Mr. Dollar, whatever is he talking about? How about you and Mr. Emmett? M and how you M plan to use Jodiah's friendship to get you out of trouble in case your little scheme failed? Well, I still don't understand. No? Well, suppose I tell you that you did away with Felicity yourself. Why, you... You can't prove that. I won't need to. Jodiah is having a copy made of all your bank deposits since the time you moved in with Mrs. Hammermeyer 15 years ago and started taking care of her by paying her bills, ordering her food and medicine, and pocketing a good share of the money for yourself. Well, why shouldn't I have? She didn't give me one cent of salary. Oh, I know. And your bank balance shows you have $47,000 on deposit. All right. Uh, all right. But I'll pay it back. You'll see. Oh, they won't be able to do a thing to me. No, sir, Mildred Hammermeyer appreciated me even if nobody else did or does. You'll see. My name will be in that envelope. She wanted me to have that money all the time. I know she did. Hi. Ready to read the will? Yeah, just about. Uh, Joyce, you and your father sit over there, huh? Mm-hmm. Wherever you say, Mr. Dollar. Okay, Jodiah, open the will. Sure, I will. But if it does give the money to... Jodiah. Well, Mrs. Hammermeyer should spin in her grave if it does. Read it if you dare, you... You old... Go to miserable female woman. Yeah. Yes, well, I'll read it now. Here we go. Ah, codicil to the last will and testament of Mildred Emmett Hammermeyer. Witness by... Yes, there's a lot of legal gab here. Ah, here we are. The money's unspent after the death of the cat known as Felicity shall... Well, hold it smooth. What? What? Mr. Gillis. This is no time for laughing, Gillis. <laughs> read it, your dad. <laughs> yes, <laughs> please. Oh, oh doggone. I just, yeah, I'll, I'll read this thing again. <clears throat> the monies unspent shall then go to the descendants of the original heir. The what? The descendants? Huh? Descendant. What? Uh, yes. Well, how... the, the original heir is Felicity. Now, the money goes to his descendants. And being as he was a tomcat who loved to go prowling at oh. night, oh. did he ever have descendants? Oh! <laughs> Hundreds of them! Oh! <laughs> well, sir, what happened later proved once and for all that miracles can happen. For at 1 o'clock on Friday afternoon, we got a phone call from the Pretty Kitty Beauty Shop. A large tomcat with a bad cut on the back of his neck had shown up for his usual shampoo and manicure. Maybe they do have nine lives. Expense account total, including hotel bill, incidentals, and transportation back to Hartford, $407.20. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week... An actor who talked nothing but Shakespeare and who talked himself into his grave. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. For the past 55 minutes, you've been listening to the best of radio drama, The Suspense and Johnny Dollar. Be sure and join us again tomorrow night at the same time, 9.05, when FEN presents the Phil Harris Show and the Life of Riley.